Britain, supposedly a property-owning democracy, except nowadays we're not building enough property and we're not doing as much owning. Many are giving up on the prospect of ever owning their own homes, but not our politicians. It's a dream they won't let die. The young people in their 20s and 30s, still living with their parents, desperately saving for their own place. The couple who want a child but can't afford to upsize, even though they've both got full-on, full-time jobs. It shouldn't be this way. We've said that a Conservative government would build 100,000 new starter homes. They'll be 20% cheaper than normal. They won't be snapped up by buy-to-let landlords or foreign investors. They'll be reserved for first-time buyers. Harold Macmillan is the hero of house building in this country. Back then, in the 50s, only defence was a greater political priority. And the then housing minister had up in his department a tally of the number of houses being built. It resembled, his biographer said, a cricket scoreboard. The coalition government has struggled to get up to the dizzying numbers that Macmillan did. The last year for which figures are available shows them building about 160,000. In the early part of the coalition, that was even fewer, about 130,000. But you can see, before the financial crash, that the Labour government did manage to get over 200,000 in a few successive years. These are, however, not batting averages that Macmillan would have fancied. This graph has been made by the charity Shelter with government statistics. They show that in England, housing supply has fallen and, particularly in the last 35 years, even where there's been a boom, housing supply has not increased. Here, where the lines are essentially flatlining, is actually a period of above-trend economic growth. After the financial crash of 2008, housing completion slowed. Even brick-making stalled. Here's the Prime Minister recently pressing the button to restart a brick factory. The coalition says it's clawed its way back. Changes to planning, releasing government land, bringing more brownfield sites into production and government help with deposits like the help to buy scheme defying some of its critics. But many, including senior Tories, think even more drastic action is needed. Professor Danny Dawling has recently shown that houses in Oxford are now 16 times their owner's income, a multiple greater even than London. The solution is to get people to pack themselves a bit more tightly into housing, but in places like Oxford, they've already done that. Here, the only way you can relieve housing pressure is to have a little bit of building. It needs to be a building that doesn't rely on cars, where people can walk or cycle in or use public transport. And here, on the fields above, within two or three miles of Carfax in the centre of Oxford, you've got an enormous amount of land that you could very carefully build on so that you didn't have some of the highest house price prices in Europe within such a centre of employment. Dave is an Oxford academic, Annie works in a charity, and they aren't badly paid. Oh, I mean, we would love to, to buy, but it would, it would be a long time before we could afford the deposit for a house um, in, in Oxford. It's, it's, it's beyond our reach. So, Dave, how easy was renting? Pretty awful. Um, we had the problem that we were expecting a baby at the time, and we got the impression that landlords and estate agents were um, very much against having young children in their houses. Because the landlords and the estate agents, they can choose. Yeah, they can pick and they generally seem to prefer people who are going to be, you know, that are going to be in their house the least amount of time and, you know, moving on perhaps in a year. It does feel like you're sort of made for life if you manage to be able to buy a house here because the house, you know, the prices go up and never seem to come down. Do you think you'll buy your own home soon? No. No. Why not? I don't have the money to buy a house, no. not in Oxford, no, certainly. not anywhere. Labour pledges 200,000 homes built a year by 2020. The Lib Dems promise 300,000 in the same period. If you look at our house building numbers since the Second World War, actually, what you can see is that the lesson of history is we only really build very, very large numbers of homes when the state is more actively involved. Uh, the question is exactly what role should government play? I think I would argue that the state can be more active in house building without necessarily needing to take on very large amounts of new debt. Posters show that housing won't determine many votes in May's election. It's just not a top three issue. But if today's propertyless young families become tomorrow's precarious middle age, housing could yet determine many elections in the years ahead.